Peace be with you all. understand and we need to really come to the grasp of is that it's not when Jesus is returning it's that it is he is going to return it's not if he's going to return it is he is going to return and we really need to change the way we think about things because yes even though we're waiting for it we're supposed to constantly have our mind towards that time and it's not when it is that he is going to return. Jesus, when he was standing with his companions, the disciples, before he ascended into heaven, he opened their minds to the scriptures. He opened their minds so they could understand that everything that had been written about him had come to pass. And that everything that was coming to pass was meant to be as a prophecy for the future as well. Because Jesus warned that what was going to happen in the future as well. We're seeing some of those things happen. I don't think that we're in the tribulation period, but I think that we're probably at the beginning. But of course, we've probably been at the beginning. Because even Paul, during his time, said he was waiting for Christ to come quickly. And he thought during his time that Christ was going to return. As we've been studying the book of Genesis, again, I'm going to mention the fact that there was a statement written in last week's Bible study in Genesis that said that Abram believed God. It didn't say Abraham believed in God. Abram believed God. And there's a huge difference between those two statements. Because a lot of times what we, we, we seem to forget is that we need to believe what God has told us. 
He told us that he would never leave us or forsake us. Why are we afraid? He told us that he would be with us even into the end of the age. Why are we terrified and fearful of the things that have been happening in the last couple of years? If he promises that he would be with us even until the end, it doesn't matter what this world throws at us, we need to understand that he is with us. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. Now that we're concluded with the 40 days after the crucifixion and resurrection, and we're now here to the ascension, now we're working towards our next guidepost, right? Our next milestone, Pentecost. This is something that we need to understand, that the cycle is continual, right? The cycle continues to happen over and over and over again for the last 2,000 years it's been happening. Last night as I was talking to one of our fellow parishioners, it came, it came to this realization that I was thinking about, again, studying Genesis, that Adam and Eve, right, when, they were, when God created man, that Adam and Eve were given specific instructions. You can have whatever you want in the garden. Everything, right? You can have all the things in the garden, just not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Everything else you can freely eat of, right? It was a simple thing. It's not like, it's not like God told them, you can't have 99 things and the only thing that you can have is the one. It was the one that they couldn't have. There had to be some sort of guideline. There had to be something that allowed them to have choice. But, again, as we look at the serpent, which we believe, and we under, come to understand, that the serpent is the devil, right? The divider. In Greek, again, the word is diabolos, the divider. And that day, he convinced Eve to eat of the fruit, and then Eve convinced her husband. That marriage that was made to God was broken because of disobedience. The first sin was not murder between Cain and Abel, it was disobedience. And it was something that has been spurred and, and, and gave birth to for the centuries. And I would say that disobedience, that that spurning, that that diabolos, the person that's been dividing, has been doing it. If you read the Old Testament, we go through all these patriarchs in the Old Testament. Now we're with Abram, right? Abram, that becomes Abraham. He too gets divided between with what God has told him to do. And he starts to do things in his own way. Again, his wife telling him to do something, and instead of trusting God, he does whatever he wants to do anyway. And again, there was division between Ishmael and Isaac. We go through that every century, right? We go through that throughout the centuries. And I'm going to dare say that whatever happens, it is the failure of the people to adhere to what God says. It's not the failure of God. We come centuries later, after the crucifixion, we have what Christ came to show us, right? He came with the Ten Commandments, during, uh, on the mountain, and he taught the people, trying to give them a covenant for them to follow. But again, people did whatever they wanted to do, and there was division, and armies came, and division came, and destruction came, and once again, the people would get back on track, and then rinse and repeat over and over again. It happened over and over again. But let's fast forward again to our Orthodox Church, right? I will dare say that I, and I'll probably get stoned for this, but I'm going to dare say that it wasn't anybody else's fault except the church itself, that there was a division in the first place. I say this because now, as we go through this modern day, we see how many divorces, right? How many people go through divorces, how many people go through this tremendous amount of heartache because they were not taught right in the first place. The church dropped the ball. The church has dropped the ball for centuries. The church has dropped the ball for years and years and years, not teaching things that they're supposed to be teaching. We're supposed to be hard on people. We're supposed to be showing you the path to heaven. Our marriage is to Christ. And when we have a divorce, we are breaking that covenant with God. We're breaking that divorce. We're getting divorced from the church. 
Whenever we go through these things, whenever we go through these heartaches and everything like that, yes, we end up cheating on people, we end up hurting people, we end up lying against people, but ultimately the person that you're breaking the covenant with is not your spouse, it's with God. It's with God and it's with Him that we break our covenant. The church is supposed to be here to teach what chrismation is, what baptism is, what marriage is, what the priesthood means, what holy unction is. The sacraments of the church are supposed to be taught. Solomon, when he spoke, when he talks about the, in the book of Proverbs, if you haven't read it, I would ask you to read it, he talks about wisdom. And what is it that wisdom is? A lot of people have a lot of intelligence, but they have no wisdom. A lot of people, they learn lots and lots and lots of things about the church, about government, and about all these things, but they have no wisdom at all to use it. But Solomon, he was given a gift. God asked him, what did you want? What did you want? And Solomon said, I want the wisdom to rule your people. And God said, because you did not ask, for the destruction of your enemies, because you did not ask for money, because you did not ask for all these things, I'm going to give you all those things plus the thing that you asked for. Because while we are sitting at home, a lot of us, and me included, I will be guilt I am guilty of it as well. I end up turning on the TV and vegging out in front of the TV instead of talking about the Lord. We're supposed to be talking about God when we're sitting at our dinner table. We're supposed to be talking about God when we're sitting in the vehicle driving from place to place. We're supposed to be talking about God with our children as we're walking in the park. We're supposed to be talking about God all the time. And whenever we're sitting inside there and we in our in our hall and we end up talking about idle things and everything, and again, I am the first one to admit it. I talk about movies, I talk about things, and I'm trying to bridge a gap between people. But the thing is, is if I'm not leading all those things back into Christ, those things are just idle talk. And we're dividing ourselves from God. When we begin to understand, we will understand that Christ is coming back. As Metropolitan Gregory says, today is one day closer that he is coming back. Today is one day closer that he is going to return. And we need to start teaching our children what it truly means to be married, first of all, to Christ. And once we teach our children what it means to be married to Christ, then we will be equipped to marry somebody that's another human being on this planet. But again, all the times that we have been divided throughout the centuries, it was the fault of the church itself. The Orthodox Church failed, and it split. The Catholic Church failed, and it split. The Protestant Church has failed, and they're split. All these non-denominational churches, their splits are caused by the Avalos, the, de the devil. It's divided. And we need, yes, it is wise, it is something that is needed to be unified in our faith. However, the way that they're doing it and the way that they're allowing it is that we are not supposed to be at the table of demons. We're not supposed to be allowed to be with other people that are not like-minded. We need to be with people that are like-minded. And we need to have friendships of people that are like-minded. That's why it's so important when we come to church, when we come here to this building, that we talk about Christ and Him crucified and the ascension and the resurrection. And it's important for our children to see us being Christians, Christ in us. It's important for us to teach our children what it truly means for us to give up this world in order to gain eternity. And we end up sitting there putting our children in front of iPads, putting our children in front of phones, putting our children in front of the TV. It's been happening for years. For years and years and years, we have seen what what was the term that they use? Um, the latchkey kids, right? 
the devil once again dividing the family, having both parents forced to work and for the child to come home and fend for themselves. And the latchkey kids spawned into another generation where they didn't mind that because they had the freedom that they needed. And now they're that generation after them and the generation after them and the generation after them has now spawned into something that we have right now because we have not allowed Christ to come into our household. As much as we say we did, as much as we come to church, as much as we do these things, we need to start living the way that we are saying that we're supposed to be living. We're, our marriage to Christ is something that's supposed to be ironclad. We're not supposed to cheat on him with movies, with strip clubs, with drugs, with alcohol, with divorce, with any of the things that Satan can bring into our lives to divide us. We're not supposed to divide ourselves from Christ with those things. And that's why it's so important for us to know and open our minds to what the scriptures have to say. Yes, the scriptures are only a part of our tradition, but it is a big part of our tradition because everything that we do is based on it. But we also have the church fathers that re that relayed themselves to the scriptures. And we need to have going through the church fathers, and then we need to have people that are modern day church fathers again teaching. For some reason, our minds have gotten to the point where we cannot move farther than the church fathers. If we never move farther than the church fathers, our church is going to die. We need to have people that are standing up and believing what God is saying and preaching and teaching. There are a few people out there, and we see them on YouTube until YouTube kicks them off. We see them on Facebook until Facebook kicks them off. We see them on the things that we see, but we need those. But I tell you that the church fathers did not have YouTube, did not have Facebook, and did not have all these modern things. And guess what? Their teachings are still being taught today. We don't need all those things in order to teach what is true. Let us glorify and praise the name of the Lord and remember what we're doing and take seriously the marriage that we have to Christ. Because once we take seriously that marriage to Christ, our marriages will begin to flourish, our children begin to flourish, and we will begin to live lives according to the way that we need to be. Our goal is to become holy. Our goal is to become pure, righteous, merciful, gracious, and loving people. That's our goal. And no matter what people do to us, we never should allow ourselves to be, rail, to be derailed from our journey to forever. So let us glorify and praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.